time to get started. I just hear my dog. You heard that in the background. She jumped up. So uh, today, and she shook her head. Today we're going to talk about, and she did it again. Okay, I think she's done. Today we're going to talk about some advanced scripting things. Uh, we've written some scripts to do some stuff. We've explored the looping uh, syntax, and we've hopefully written some loops as was assigned in the homework. Uh, but now we're going to talk about some some uh, advanced things uh, that you would be likely to use if you write scripts to do real things. Because most of the scripts we've written so far are kind of just uh, made up scripts so that we can do some stuff to, to exercise the, the scripts. So, so far we've gotten user input by asking the user to enter something at a question and then we've uh, we've done something based on that. Well. Uh, most of the time, I shouldn't say most of the time, most of the time for me, I write scripts that uh, I know what I want it to do, so I don't need to ask myself what I want it to do. So I, I pass parameters at the command line. So if you had a script, you could pass parameters at the command line. You could do something like this, you know. That's a terrible name. I'll just call it CL.sh. I haven't written it yet. And then you'll specify some things like rich... Uh, RBE one two three four or something like that. So if I was to execute this script, I'd need to be able to access those parameters. So let's go ahead and write a script to allow us to do that and see what we need to do. So it's pretty simple. When you pass parameters to a script, they get put into the variable called uh, positional parameter called with a dollar sign and a number. So if your if your uh, first parameter will be in dollar one, and your second parameter will be in dollar two. So we'll just print that stuff out. This is the first first parameter parameter. All right, so let's uh, try that, make it executable. So now if I put cl.sh and I put rich and my user ID, because that'd be something fun to do. Hey, I printed two, so, so that was good. If I put three, what's gonna happen? Well, it only printed the first two because I didn't tell my script to do anything with dollar three. So uh, if you write a script, that you're going to be using for your own purposes and you know the number of arguments you're supposed to have, then you can uh, only specify the dollar one and dollar two because you know you're only supposed to have two arguments. So if you're writing a script that other people might use, you might want to check some things out to make sure they're not trying to do stuff you don't want them to do. So another parameter, well, that's not what I wanted. Another parameter uh, that we can look at that is set automatically is the dollar uh, pound sign. So dollar pound sign tells us how many arguments we have. So if we run the script again, we have two arguments. So if you write a script that you know should only have two arguments, you can put a little little error checking in there. This something that says something along, along the lines of if you know dollar pound uh, not equal to then echo and you should print what's called a usage message usage cli dot sh arg one arg arg1, arg2. Now, in the real world, you would put what the arguments are really supposed to be, like, hey, you're supposed to put the username, or oh, let's go ahead and do that. First name, user name. So the person that's trying to run your script knows what you want. So let's go ahead and fix this. Eche, that's French for echo, just kidding. I don't think it is. And then if it's not not the right number of arguments, we want to exit. So 
This will say, hey, if there's two arg if the if the arguments are not equal to, then give them a usage message and then exit. So let's try that again. And it didn't like my uh, didn't like my code for some reason. Oh, because I didn't put a space. Hey, check that out. All right, so that time I had two arguments, so it worked fine. If I put something else, then it's like, hey, yo, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. So then that that's a way you can make sure people provide you the correct number of arguments. So uh, that is uh, that. If you know exactly how many arguments you're, you're going to need. Say you don't know how many arguments you're going to get. Say you want to, uh, you know, give somebody the option to delete a bunch of files. And they can, they can say, you, they can run your script. And then you'll delete the files for them. I don't know why you write a script to do that. But anyway, maybe you need to validate that they're not trying to delete a file they're not allowed to delete. So yeah, so maybe you do that. So, so in that case, we wouldn't do this kind of thing. We would take all the arguments they give us, and then we would would uh, then we would run an action for each of the for all those items. So uh, there's a couple ways you could do that. You could use the value you get for the number of arguments, and you could could loop through that number of times, or you can use another uh, another special thing that exists. What am I doing? And that is the dollar star uh, all argument arguments dollar star prints all the arguments contains all the arguments. So if we do this now, in theory, it should print all three of them. You know, if we have two arguments, it prints two of them. If we have five arguments. It prints five of them, and that's actually six arguments, but you know, you get the idea. So, uh, if we want to do something with all of those arguments, we will not delete anything. We'll just print them all for fun. We could do, we could do for arg in dollar star do done, and then we could do something. We'll just echo them. We'll just echo them. So there we go. We printed each of the arguments on its own line. So in the real world, you would probably want to take some actual action based on those arguments in in that uh, in in that command line argument. Uh, another thing that might be useful for you to know uh, is that there is a special vari variable, the dollar question mark. The dollar question mark contains the return value of the last command that ran. So, uh, a successful command will give you a, a return value of zero. An unsuccessful command will give you a return value of something other than zero. So, if I try to remove a file that, that does not exist, I got an error message. So, now if I look at the dollar question, I have a value other than zero. If I actually execute a file that uh, I don't even know what's in the, let's see what kind of delete. If I actually here let's cat a file. Yeah, there I, I catted a file. So now if I uh, I cleared the command, that's, that was dumb. Cat a file, and now if I look at the dollar question mark, it should be zero because that successfully ran. So you can use. Uh, this va value in conditional statements if you want. So you can run a command and then if you want to check to make sure it's successful you can write an if statement and continue only if it was successful. So, uh, or to print an error message if it didn't work you could, you could do that as well. So uh, that could be useful for you to know in, in the future. Another special uh, variable is the dollar dollar, which tells you the process ID of the current process. So, uh, if you're doing something and you're, you know, I don't know. Let me think of a scenario. I don't know. You might need to know the current process ID for some reason. Uh, you could do that to find that. Uh, the, another special one about process IDs is 
dollar uh, exclamation point. So if I run a command in the background, right, it just told me the process ID. But if I didn't catch that or I'm doing it in a script and I want to catch it and do something else, I can do dollar exclamation point, and that's going to print out the the process ID. So now I can kill. Hey, check that out. Kill dollar exclamation point. Kill. There, I killed at that time. I'll show you. All right. Um, another thing that might be helpful for you to know. Let me go back for for uh, return values for a second. I skipped over something I wanted to say. All different commands have different return values, and even in some cases, the return values for the same command across different types of systems may vary. So if you want to look at the man page of a, of a command, normally at the bottom of the man page, well, that one didn't have it, it tells you return values. Let's try another one. Fine should have some return values because it's a pretty uh, complex command. Exit status. Oh. Find exits with a status of zero if all files are processed successfully, greater than zero if errors occur. This is deliberately a very broad description. Blah, blah, blah. So, uh, some commands actually say zero means this, one means this, two means this, uh, to tell you what the actual error means. Let's see if we can find one. There we go. User add has actual exit values that tell you uh, really what it means. Zero means success, one means can't update the password file, two means invalid command syntax, three means invalid op argument to option, four means UID already in use. So you can use these values to, be, to very precisely find out what went wrong in some cases. All right, another thing I wanted to talk about is command line arguments. So we've done some commands where we can specify arguments, grep dash V, for example, grep dash I, you know, when netstat dash AN, I use this all the time. I don't know if we talk about it in here. That shows you your open ports. So if you want to write your script, write a script that can do some things based on command line options like that, you can use the get ops uh, function or command for that. That's a bit beyond the scope of uh, what we need to learn, but I wanted to mention it in case anybody ever wanted to uh, to get uh, ops. <laughs> Just kidding. If anybody wanted to to do any scripting where you were going to ask for some options, essentially you do the get ops and it automatically parses out the options for you, right? The other way would would be if you if you uh, didn't use the get ops command and you wanted to take you know some options you would have to write some uh, a lot of code to to look at dollar one, dollar two, dollar three values to figure out what they what they mean because most of the time you can specify options like this, you can also specify them like this. So if the users are going to be doing all these different things, then then parsing through those without using get ops is probably going to be a very a difficult task. So uh, I think I think that's all I wanted to cover right now about some of the more advanced uh, things.